I was the top dog at the time with Afro-Americans. When we left the starting line, one of my nitro systems, I didn't cut on. My car woke up and came to life. I was chasing him. He came in front of me and hit the wall. He's in my lane. I switched lanes. When he hit the wall, come back, he was over top of me and I drove under him. And I got away from that. Wow. It's the all new Valley Gold with Deborah. This is the show that brings you the stars, the stories, and the performances. You'll see familiar faces and you'll get to learn more about how they do what they do. Today, Deborah chops it up with national drag race champion and entrepreneur Lorenzo Killer Brooks. So stay tuned. Deborah has great features for you on the all new Valley Gold with Deborah. Stay tuned for our Legends Music Moment. Special delivery. That's what each newborn baby is in the hands of your team in the village. Dr. Rodney Hill and his professional staff of nurse practitioners. Conveniently located on 5th Avenue in Youngstown. Open weekdays and Saturdays. Call today. Whether it's Motown, Philly Soul, Stax, Solar, Savoy, you name it. People from every nation love old school rhythm and blues music. Now, I hope you enjoy. Honey, you do me wrong, but still I'm crazy about you. Stay away too long and I can't do without you. It's all about the love on Valley Gold with Deborah. Trust, dignity, and peace of mind. These are the qualities you look for when planning the memorial service of a loved one. Ellie Black Phillips and Holden Funeral Home is the name families have come to rely on for pre-need planning, grief support, financial guidance, and compassion during life's most difficult time. Located at 1951 McGuffey Road in Youngstown, in the time of need, it's Ellie Black Phillips and Holden Funeral Home, still caring for the memories most cherished by you. Welcome back to the show. We live in a day and time where many people just can't seem to figure out how to build the kind of relationship that will last a lifetime. Well, my next guest is all about the love. His name is Jason Harrison. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thanks for having me. Yes, let's explore, Deborah, shall we? Let's talk about accountability, right? Now, if we understand that relationships are learning modules to learn more about yourself. This means the people you're closest to, which could, which could be your romantic partner, is going to trigger parts of yourself that needs to be looked at. So when that happens, you have to be accountable to be honest with yourself, to look at yourself and know that this is something I need to work on. Because it's going to happen. Every time there's an argument and a trigger within a relationship, it's always pointing towards an emotional wound that needs to be attended to. Two people have to be invested in their own self-love and advancement and evolution if they truly want to evolve within a relationship. And that's the only way a relationship can last. And it lasts on the foundation of being accountable for yourself. And sometimes it can be very hard. It's hard to face yourself, you know? You may even feel some shame when your partner points out something about you that needs to be looked at. But if two people love each other, you can support each other within that uncomfortable state. Okay, because that's what love does. 
Love is attempting to unravel the parts of you that needs to be healed. So understand, being accountable is beneficial for you. And if two people could be accountable, it's beneficial for the relationship. Y'all need to help her. Somebody help the more help the more. Somebody help her. <laughs>Belly Gold with Deborah. Now when you watch, let's not be selfish about it by keeping it all to yourself. Show me and your friends some love by sharing the links and leaving comments. Tell me what you think. I absolutely love reading remarks from our viewers. Now stay tuned because we're going to keep this party going. <music> Hubby was in the other room, but he could smell this wonderful aroma coming from the kitchen. Poor fella. Aromas can be quite deceiving. Check it out. The bar, that's a, that's a cake right there. That's a real cake. Hey, the bar, the bar, the bar, it's a real cake right there. <laughs> the bar, go ahead. Hey, the bar, go ahead and eat it. <laughs> Hubby's in the other room. He just said it smells good in the kitchen. Bless his heart. Up next, it's Keeping It Fresh on Valley Gold with Deborah. The outage started just after 3.30 this afternoon, spreading across the Northeast. Our choices define us, makes us who we are, who will you choose to become. We can't stay here, okay? We need to leave right now. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, absolutely. Keeping it fresh for us today is a gorgeous, melanin-rich beauty named Ashley All Smiles. Ashley is the quintessential beauty stylist. So from head to shoulders, she's gonna show us how to keep it fresh. Hello, Deborah. Thank you so much for having me and sharing me with your viewers today. I am Ashley All Smiles, and today I'm going to talk about work. No, no, not really. But for those of you who don't know, I am a nurse by trade, if I can call it trade, and I never wear makeup to work. So I'm going to show you how I would keep it fresh if I did wear makeup to work. Check it out. Stay tuned as Deborah chops it up with Drag Race champion Lorenzo Killer Brooks. Do you have challenges posing your dancers? Well, we have a solution for you. Point Now Flex Posing Cards. We ensure you this deck of cards will enhance your next photo shoot with visuals on the front and descriptions on the back. Varying categories to help your photo shoot from the beginning to the end. So honey, Go ahead and visit our site and grab your deck of Point Now Flex posing cards. 
special delivery. That's what each newborn baby is in the hands of your team in the village. Dr. Rodney Hill and his professional staff of nurse practitioners. Excellent prenatal care is what helps ensure a healthy baby. So for the best women's health, reproductive and prenatal care, you'll want to be in the hands of Dr. Rodney Hill, Mama Carol and Nurse Sin. They're your team in the village where every delivery is special. Conveniently located on Fifth Avenue in Youngstown, open weekdays and Saturdays. Today's guest is a really competitive guy with racing in his veins. As a youngster, he lost his brother in a drag racing accident on the streets in Youngstown, Ohio. As a young man, he lost his freedom for his involvement in drugs. But through every twist and turn his life has taken, he has never lost his love for cars and driving fast. My guest is the first African-American to win the IHRA Pro Mod Drag Race Championship in this entire United States. Let's welcome my guest, Lorenzo, AKA Killer Brooks. Welcome to the show, Lorenzo. How you doing today? I'm so glad to have you. You are a busy man on the road, literally. Yeah, I've been doing a lot this year. Racing so, like crazy. Are you? Is your racing season up now? Yes, it's up right now. So, how many races do you do during the course of a year? Uh, give it, give and take about ten. About ten races. Yeah, about ten. Do you tend to win often? <sighs> this year, I ain't do that good. Really? I ain't gonna fake it. <laughs> Spent a lot of money, a lot of work. Had a problem with one of my cards, so. All the time, $1,800 later, finds out it was just a coil that caused the car to miss. Oh, no. But after we got it running, I started qualifying pretty deep into the program. Oh, okay. So yeah. do you ever have seasons where you just don't feel like it? No. No? You I, always love doing it. How long I, have you been racing? I've been racing ever since I was the age of 14. Wow. Yeah. So let's, let, let's go back a little bit in time and talk about how you got started in racing. I know that... Uh, you have a number of family members that were into drag racing, so you want to just kind of open up about that. Well, my brother was in a car accident when I was young, and he was into drag racing. Now, this is an older brother? Yeah, my older brother, Tommy. And uh, I was the one that went and got him. And, you know, hyped up on your brother. He got a race car. You know, you're young. So they was racing on Jacobs Road, and I went and got him. Meanwhile, on the way back, he had told me to, uh, well, when he got him, he told me to ride up on my mini bike. I want to ride in his car. Mm -hmm. So when I rode back up on my mini bike, hyped up, telling everybody, my brother coming, my brother coming. He did come, but it was a tragedy. He uh, came up there, two cars was racing, coming back up Jacobs Road. He made a U-turn in front of McGuffey Center. And one of the cars caught him broadside, and he got through out of the car and crushed against the curve. And uh, when I ran up to the car and looked inside of it, he wasn't in it. He was, uh, when I ran to the back of the car, he was in the back of the car, crushed up against the curve between the back tire and the curve. That was a devastating point at that time for me. So I took and uh, ever since then, to not go any further into it, I decided that I wasn't going to stop until I fulfilled the dream that I feel he wanted. Wow, you know, some people would have taken the opposite approach, especially being there on the scene. I can't even imagine the impact that that had on you. But you never had a period where, you know, because of that, you said, I don't want any parts of this. No, it was something that I feel I had to do. How did your mom feel? Does she want you to continue to race? She didn't want me to get in it because uh, I didn't have no money at the time and she wanted, she didn't want me to be involved in that type of things, but I explained to her, I said, uh, safety come first. And uh, although my brother made a U-turn, you know, and that's why it occurred like that. You did have a derailment, so to speak, in your career. Uh, you did some time and in, in, you were incarcerated. Well, no, how I got into the life of crime, Drag racing is like a drug. Some people might not look at it like that, but it's addiction. Drag racing, you can't put it in a person, but you can't take it out of a person if that's what they want to do. And uh, when you want a drag race and it's in your blood, you do just about anything to get the money to make it happen. 
At the time, I couldn't get sponsors at the time. Now, now how old were you? I was, uh, I was in my 30s. Okay. At the time, it was a white man's sport, they said it. Okay. But I, I refused to hear that. I wanted in, and I didn't care which way I got in, and I did what I had to do. And I sold drugs to, uh, to finance my racing. So did you ever do drugs? Never used drugs or drink or doing anything in my life. So what kind of numbers, what kind of money did you need for sponsorship? You need uh, anywhere from really $100,000, $250,000. Wow. But in my case, I just took whatever I can get and anything else. I just did what I had to do. I would do all the work myself majority of the time on my cars. And uh, it cuts down the expense when you do a lot of your own work. Mm -hmm. Were you able to make a lot of money selling the drugs in order to cover all of your expenses? Truthfully, yes. <laughs> I can smile about it, but I ain't smile about it when I was in prison. I made so much money that you couldn't carry it. <laughs> I'm sorry. If we can pause for a second, I don't understand that. What do you What do you mean? You made so much money you couldn't carry. You can count your money. If you can count your money, you ain't got enough money then. If you can take a money and put it in a bag, and you can't carry it out of this room, that's what I mean. Bags of money, garbage bags full of money. Are you serious? Yeah. So obviously that caught up with you. The law caught up with you and you had to go to prison. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Lorenzo about his racing experiences or his uh, financial experiences that landed him in the slammer when we come back. And that's not funny. Right back with Deborah on Valley Gold and Lorenzo Brooks after this. Trust, dignity, and peace of mind. These are the qualities you look for when planning the memorial service of a loved one. Ellie Black Phillips and Holden Funeral Home is the name families have come to rely on for pre-need planning, grief support, financial guidance, and compassion during life's most difficult time. Located at 1951 McGuffey Road in Youngstown, in the time of need, it's Ellie Black Phillips and Holden Funeral Home, still caring for the memories most cherished by you. Every engine lover knows that sweet sound of an engine that is ready to race. This car was made ready at the Predator Zone. The Predator Zone is Northeast Ohio's only test and tune track. 330 feet of track with reaction time. Our track will pull your teeth out. Located on Youngstown's east side, grand opening in April. Before you put that car in the race, make an appointment at the Predator Zone. And we're back on Valley Gold with Devorah and my special guest, Lorenzo Brooks, drag race champion. So just before we took the break, uh, we were discussing how you ended up uh, being able to sponsor yourself in the uh, drag racing field. So before you went to prison, uh, you went to prison in 1991. Mm -hmm. And but prior to that, you won the IHRA Pro Mont Championship. So let's talk about that because it's, it's crazy when you think about it. Here you are, you become this national champion. Mm -hmm. Did anybody know how you were funding yourself? No, I was telling my mother was rich. <laughs> That's what I used to tell people. It wasn't a business. I was trying to hide what I was doing. Yeah. But when I won up there in Canada, the Winter Nationals, it was, a, it was an exciting thing for me at the time. You know, I made big money when I'd done it. Plus, I won a lot of other runner-ups and all that throughout the country. But I was known because of the simple fact that I was an Afro-American and wasn't that many of us in it. Yeah. And because of that, today, there's a lot of Afro-Americans that is in drag racing right today. So you win this championship. This is in 1990. And the feds are, I guess, fast on your heels by now, right? Yes, they are. So you want to talk about the day that arrived where you knew the game was up. They kicked in my doors. They came to your house? Yes. They came to my house, took 
everything. And that's where I went downhill into the Fed system. What was that like emotionally for you when they when they kicked your doors in and, and you know you knew you were facing some real serious charges? I knew that I knew sooner or later, you know, you never slick enough because when you sell into a a large amount of people, I was prepared anyway. You had to know that that was gonna come to a dead end. So what kind of future did you really see for yourself going forward, you know, uh, building off of the, uh, or building a drug empire, if you will? Well, it's hard to say. My vision was what I wanted, but as things start going downhill, I start looking at myself as if I work as hard doing something legal, as hard as I did to do something illegal, <laughs> I can still go forward. So when you were, when you were in prison, uh, you shared with me earlier uh, something that you did that made you decide from that point forward you would never sell drugs again. So you want to share with our viewers what that was about? Well. In, in the feds joint, I call it a fed joint, I'm gonna just keep it real. And uh, they make you go to the drug program. It's a 500 hour drug program you have to go to. Even though you never took drugs. Although I never took drugs or used it. And uh, when I was in there, I learned a lot. I learned what drugs actually do to a person. When I realized what the drug would do to a person, that's when I realized that I was putting this poison out here just because I wanted to uh, finance my habit of drag racing. So that's when I said I'd never sell drugs no more. And which one I got out, I never touched that or sold drugs again. Because you saw the impact that you were having, probably even on people that you love. I was messing up our community. And I had family members that was on that stuff. And uh, I'd seen what I'd done. So I chose I wanted to give something back to the community. And I decided to do positive things and working on people's cars, landscaping, whatever it takes. Then I started really putting more effort into sponsors, trying okay. to find them. Okay. And uh, like I was saying, if I put as much work into trying to do the right thing, it would come It'll come. Uh, we're going to take another commercial break. And when we get back, when we come back, we're going to talk about something really special that you've been able to build. Talk about giving back to the community on Valley Gold with Deborah when we come back. The outage started just after 3.30 this afternoon, spreading across the Northeast. Our choices define us. It makes us who we are. Who will you choose to become? Stay here, okay? We need to leave right now. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have challenges posing your dancers? Well, we have a solution for you. Point Now Flex Posing Cards. We ensure you this deck of cards will enhance your next photo shoot with visuals on the front and descriptions on the back. Varying categories to help your photo shoot from the beginning to the end. So honey, go ahead and visit our site and grab your deck of Point Now Flex Posing Cards. It's the all new Valley Gold with Deborah. Now when you watch, let's not be selfish about it by keeping it all to yourself. Show me and your friends some love by sharing the links and leaving comments. Tell me what you think. I absolutely love reading remarks from our viewers. Now stay tuned because we're going to keep this party going. And we're back on Valley Gold with my special guest, Lorenzo Killer Brooks, national drag race champion. Uh, so many things I could say about you. Uh, just somebody who's determined, a uh, visionary, and who executes the visions that he has. So uh, we promised our viewers we would talk about something really special that is on the horizon. And when I say it's on the horizon, it's not just uh, a plan. It's actually 
happened. It's in place, just not open full fledged yet because we got to wait till the season rolls back around. But we want to tell the viewers about the Predator Zone. Zone. Yes. So for those who don't know, first of all, let's tell them what the Predator Zone is and why you use the name Predator. Well, the Predator Zone, because all my race cars are named the Predators. We created the Predator Zone on the basis of when you go to the racetrack, you can travel across country and then get there and find out you can't even race because your car has some serious problems. Something stupid didn't happen. So we create the Predator Zone so we can test the cars at the racetrack so at my house. So we should tell them the Predator Zone is a test and tune track. It's a test and tune track, correct. And uh, when we test and tune the cars there, we save the trouble of when we get to the racetrack, we pretty much got the car tuned to go. And uh, we uh, open up the opportunities for people in the area that comes over that want to test their cars also. Then they can bring their kids, because we got a little pond up there that can, kids can fish, and kids in the neighborhood and people comes and watch. It's an area where the whole family can come and, and enjoy and participate, like maybe while the husband or whoever the, the driver is is working on their car or the, the um, engine mechanic is working yeah. on the car. Um, family can, because uh, I think you have uh, grills out there. and It was uh, plenty of people came up, brought their grills. It was up there all day. So <laughs> want to tell the viewers where the Test and Tune track is located. And, uh, you know, of course, now we're coming into the colder months, so... Um, when it'll be open up for business again? It's located off of Jacobs Road on Regent Street. That's in Youngstown, Ohio. And it's, um, it opens up again in April. Going through everything that you have experienced, if you were to meet a young uh, Lorenzo Brooks, who, you know, you could tell he had the fire in his belly to race, and he didn't have the resources, like when you were coming up, mm -hmm. What would you be able to say to him in order for him to uh, know that there's another way to fund what he's trying to do? Number one, I tell him that it's a lot of things going out of here and drugs is a main factor. And I tell him do drags, not drugs. Okay. Because of the simple fact that uh, it had to take me to go to prison. Like I speak in some schools and tell them, drugs ain't the right way to go. Although it's easy money, but the only, only things can happen prison and death. Slow money is good money because you don't have to worry about going to prison. You don't got to worry about none of that. Although, you know, there's people out there that's doing it like I was, but they'll come to their senses sooner or later. Great and encouraging words from Lorenzo Killer Brooks, who would know because he's been in the trenches. He's been doing this for a number of years. So happy to have you as my guest. This, is, this has been a real joy and a treat for me. And until next time, that's it for now. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.